Oh, hey, it's your friend then. Just like Madonna, I had a celestial dream. Guess what they told me my destiny was? To bring you more tech tea. So I'm back, and only slightly worse for wear. So without further ado, let's get into it. Here are three tech updates to get you through your Thursday. Side loading may be enabled for EU iPhone users, but Apple wants you to know that Epic Games still aren't. Here's what you need to know. iOS 17.4 was released this week, which enabled marketplaces or alternative app stores, which opens up the option of having users download apps that may not be on the Apple App Store. This was exciting for Epic Games since it may be finally able to bring Fortnite back to iOS after its removal back in 2020. It did so after Epic tried to bypass the App Store completely in order to not pay the 30% commission. An Epic App Store would theoretically let them bring back Fortnite, and although they are still associated cost with having in-game currency, it would have more control over how to do so. That dream was short-lived, however, as Apple has just terminated Epic's developer account completely, squashing any hopes of an Epic-branded app store. The tech titan originally approved the account, however, this decision comes after Epic says it's retaliation for their open criticism of Apple's business mob. To be fair, it is a steep price to pay. If you need a refresher, just watch my previous video about how those fees work. Apple has stated that Epic's egregious breach of its contractual obligations led courts to determine that Apple has the right to terminate any or all of Epic Games' wholly owned subsidiaries, any time under Apple's discretion. Epic is stating this violates the DCA, and so with that, iPhone users are still out of luck about getting their favorite Epic Games, and the four-year-long court battle continues. The makers of one of the biggest Switch emulators just had to pay Nintendo a lot of money. Here's what you need to know. Yuzu is, or was, one of the most popular Nintendo Switch emulators out on the web. There's something to be said, though, about shining a bit too bright, as now they've caught the ire of Nintendo. Last month, the company sued the developers, Tropic Haze, for facilitating piracy see at a colossal scale. So what does that mean? Well, we saw the makers of Dolphin emulation get into some hot water last year, which led to them pulling the release of the emulator from Steam altogether. That emulator included Wii keys needed to play the games. Yuzu, on the other hand, doesn't have that. It makes you presumably spoof the key from your own Switch or realistically find one online. This is what Tropical Haze was trying to use to evade a piracy argument. But Nintendo is saying that providing software which can utilize such keys in general General is also piracy. The court agreed with Nintendo, and so now Tropic Haze not only needs to surrender its domain, but cease work on all tools, features, and social media that would promote Yuzu or help others make tools like the emulator. This also applies to Citra, which was their 3DS emulator. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. They also need to pay a fine of $2.4 million. It may sound harsh, but Nintendo has said that they can confirm Tears of the Kingdom, the latest Legend of Zelda title, had over 1 million copies pirated. Think about how big that fine might have been if they charged them for every title since Yuzu's initial release back in 2018. It makes sense why they folded so fast. In their wake, there has been a swift rise in other Switch emulators, but if this teaches us anything, it's that they should be wary because Nintendo plays for keeps. And finally, TikTok has been banned. Or has it? Here's what you need to know about the latest bill which was passed today in DC. So we've seen hundreds of creators petition the last few nights about how we needed to call and write to our house representatives over a TikTok ban, which was supposedly out of nowhere and could be coming for their accounts. There has been a lot of information and just a lot of heated arguments about it. So let's talk about what it is. First, the bill was passed through the US House Energy and Commerce Committee, which is responsible for overseeing and helping write legislation for the House of Reps and Congress to vote on later. So no, it's not a unanimous vote by all 435 House reps. The committee has 50 on it, although they did all vote to pass this. So what does that mean? The bill itself means to make ByteDance, the creators of TikTok, divest the app within 165 days after the bill has passed the House and Senate, or else the US will force a ban on the app altogether. Their aim is to not have a company like ByteDance store US data offshore in China, which it deems to be a possible threat to data security. To be clear, ByteDance itself isn't saying it's utilizing our data in a harmful way, but Chinese law requires companies within its borders to make the data it stores available to the CCP. 
GDP. Here's the thing though, there's also a vested interest in TikTok's downfall from companies like Google, X, and Meta. Actually, it's been shown that members of Congress own large sums of money in Meta stock, so the downfall of its competitor would be super profitable to them, and a conflict of interest for voting on this bill. That's another discussion for another time though. Ultimately, we are still here watching and creating these videos, which means TikTok lives another day. Realistically, by the small, small margins we have in the house, and in being a huge election year, this bill may have some difficulty passing in either the House or the Senate, and then if it does, it may be altered in such a way that TikTok can remain unscathed. Or Bidens will sell altogether, although I highly doubt that option. Either way, breeze. We ain't going nowhere fast, so you can live on to see my pretty gay face another day. That's all I have for now. Like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you back here for some more tech tea.